alarm bells are ringing for a possible move by the Ethics Committee to justify corruption. Canadian Citizens Group came out to accuse the committee of legalizing bribery and lobbying. It is believed that this would give politicians an edge over their opponents in matters relating to Canadian politics. Lobbying by itself has been an integral part of politics for a long time, and it has served as leverage for certain politicians while giving lobbyists connections and the power that comes with influencing people to do their bidding. Of course, there are acts that go on between lobbyists and politicians that have no ethical place in Canada's political space. But the issue now is that unlike when such acts are frowned upon by the people and justice systems, they seem to be accepted in politics, starting with bribery. The House Ethics Committee has approved a proposed revision of the lobbyists' code of conduct by and large, only making a few recommendations for changes. On March 27, Duff Conacher, the co-founder of Democratic Watch, said it's shameful that the Liberal, Conservative, and Bloc MPs on the Ethics Committee have decided to support changes that will gut key ethical lobbying rules. This was made public in a press release. Democracy Watch is joined by 26 citizen groups and more than 30 lawyers and professors in opposition to the changes proposed by Commissioner of Lobbying Nancy Belanger. They criticize the sponsored travel junkets allowed by the rules. They say the proposed new rules will also allow people to do important campaign work for a politician, then lobby that same politician shortly thereafter. They say the sense of obligation gives that lobbyist an unfair advantage. Meanwhile, Belanger said that she seeks to change the lobbyist's code of conduct because it needs to be clarified to make it more enforceable. For instance, the current code says there should be a cooling-off period between political activity in support of a politician and then lobbying that politician. It doesn't say how long, only a specified period. Manaman Dion, who is a spokesperson for the Office of the Commissioner, said, There is no definition of political activity or what is meant by a specified period. Belanger's new code seeks to define political activity and set specific time periods. A set of guidelines published by her office does this, but they aren't codified in law. They currently say the cooling-off period for higher-risk political activities should be a period equivalent to a full election cycle or four years. High-risk activities refer to those that create a sense of obligation on the part of the person benefiting from them, such as serving as campaign chair or soliciting donations for someone who is or becomes a public office holder. Conacher criticized Belanger on the matter of the cooling-off period. Unlike the guidelines published by her office, where the cooling-off period was set at four years, she had backtracked and shortened that period to one to two years. Conacher's grievances with that were made known in a February interview with the Puck Times, where he said, Somebody helps you get elected, raises a whole bunch of money for you. When do you ever stop owing them? You owe them forever. It's just ridiculous to say that it magically disappears after one to two years. This is as it was revealed that the Standing Committee on Access to Information, Privacy, and Ethics, in its March 20 letter of approval to Belanger, did not recommend lengthening the cooling-off period. The committee's letter noted the Democratic Watch's concern concerning the revised code. The concern is that a registered lobbyist could, in theory, fundraise large amounts of money for an official and lobby that official at the same time. That's because fundraising itself isn't prohibited, only full-time and nearly full-time political work for or frequent interactive interactions with that official. In a bid to remedy the situation, the committee suggested updating the definition of political work to include any significant fundraising. But this would not be possible as Belanger made this known in a March 3rd letter to the committee where she cited Rule 7 as a stumbling block. She said, Rule 7 expressly applies to circumstances outside the scope of the other rules of the code and prevents registered lobbyists from lobbying officials who could reasonably be seen to have a sense of obligation toward them. Dion said that the commissioner was hesitant to impose a longer cooling-off period because of concern that limiting people's political activity too much would be in violation of charter rights. Dion said, the updated rule was carefully crafted to achieve its objective of restricting lobbying where a sense of obligation could reasonably be seen to exist and to provide the greatest clarity for lobbyists, all while complying with the charter. Lawyers who have joined Democracy Watch's coalition against the code changes contest this claim. The claim is based on a legal opinion given to the commissioner's office by one law firm. Dion said the office has declined to share details related to that opinion in light of the importance of client solicitor privilege. A March 6 letter signed by 11 lawyers and 21 law and political science professors says Supreme Court of Canada rulings have made clear that reasonable limits on charter rights are allowed to protect government and policymaking integrity. The letter said, It is an entirely reasonable limit to prohibit a person who does anything significant to help a politician or political party from lobbying the politician, party leader, and top party officials for four years. That prohibition ensures that lobbyists don't lobby people they have helped, 
which helps ensure ethical lobbying and protects the integrity of government and policymaking. Yet another point of contention in the revised code of conduct for lobbyists is a limit on how much lobbyists can spend on gifts and hospitality for public officials. Belanger proposed a limit of $80 per year. She had originally said $30 per year but raised it after lobbying groups opposed it during the public comment period. Lobbying groups continue to oppose this limit in their testimony to the Ethics Committee in February, saying it is difficult to tell how much an official consumes at a banquet, for example, and to keep track of the worth for each person. The Ethics Committee suggested changing the limit to $200. It suggested adding language to allow for certain types of gifts beyond the limit, such as sponsored travel or gifts of reasonable value given as expressions of cultural tradition. It gave moccasins as an example the cultural gift that might cost more than the $80 limit. The committee wrote saying the committee agrees that sponsored travel, where it serves a legitimate purpose, should be exempted from the application of the low-value limit and the annual limit. In a March 27th release, Democratic Watch said, the committee wants a loophole so lobbyists can continue to give sponsored travel junket trips to MPs and their family members and associates. The group said that more than 20,000 voters signed on to its petition or its letter-writing campaign to stop the changes and that it will file a lawsuit challenging the changes if they go through. In essence, the plan by the Ethics Committee and the Commissioner to reduce the cooling-off period has dangerous consequences, as has been stated earlier. The reduced cooling-off period would give lobbyists a chance to redeem their, in quote, investments in elected officials. This means that lobbyists can push a puppet to get elected and then return after a year or two to manipulate the puppet to do their bidding. This is all shades of wrong, and it is important that this is repealed. We all know that following simple ethics rules is not Trudeau's strong suit, between serving his various puppet masters and lining his pocket and his family's pockets with ill-gotten wealth, this selfish prime minister has never been one to follow any due process, even when it hurts his party members. Unfortunately, he has been able to surround himself with like-minded puppets and lackeys that have never for one day served the interest of those that elected them. And now the ethics committee is giving them even more freedom to laugh in the face of our laws and turn Canada into a completely lawless state. How long must Canadians bear the brunt of being ruled by these lawless politicians and representatives? If this is allowed to continue, what will become of our great country and its citizens? These are questions we must ask ourselves while we await the next breath of scandal from the ruling class. And with Trudeau and his liberals, it has probably happened already. What are your thoughts on the commissioner backtracking on the guidelines? Do you think there's an overt plan to allow certain levels of corruption between lobbyists and elected officials? Please drop your opinions in the comments section below. We would love to hear from and engage you. We have a Telegram group where we can discuss issues of national concern without fear of censorship. The link to the group is in the description. We would love to have you. We would appreciate it if you leave us a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you are new or haven't yet, and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on our next big news on happenings in Canada. Thanks for watching, and I will see you at the next one.